Hello we biotonians this is Dr Vani once again in front of you and in today's super amazing session of the episode 2 of the Let's Draw It series I'm here in front of you with another amazing organ so let's get going to organ number 2 after the eyes that is the ear in this class, I'm going to be telling you some fascinating things which are very important about the ear, about how it not only helps us to hear, but to also maintain a kind of equilibrium for all the super fun activities that we do, spinning in a chair, playing some amazing music, it is all happening because of this amazing organ called the ear. Before I actually start even talking about the ear, it is very important for us to know about the sound. May it be humming of a guitar, playing any vocal organ or even listening to what I am saying. What is the most important thing is sound. So how and where the sound actually comes from? Sound comes the moment we tend to speak the beating of the vocal cords, yes indeed. These vibrations or this opening and closing of the vocal cord causes vibrations in the sound wave which comes out. And these vibrations of the sound wave beat the humming of you know, a guitar or a piano that I'm playing, any sound or even beating of drums, anything creates those vibrations. Even that creates vibrations. So everything that is sound is nothing but a form of vibration. See, ultimately in our brain, in the cortex, obviously it has to be converted into, you know, a depolarization signal, an action potential signal. But from the journey of the vibration to the depolarization is what I'm going to be doing in today's class. So you all have the external part of the ear called the pinna. What is the function of this very elastic pinna? The function of this elastic pinna and pinna bahi cheez hai, this is the outer part of the ear, right? Made up of the elastic cartilage. Now this pinna catches hold of the sound waves and directs the sound wave into the place from where the sound waves go inside the ear, which is called the external acoustic meatus. What exactly do I mean by external acoustic meatus? Acoustics is related to sound. So anything which has got anything related to sound, I mean to say acoustic. It helps us to hear and this directs the sound wave into a canal which is called the external part of the canal. This external part of the canal is just like any other portion of the skin of the human body. It's got hair, it also contains the oil glands. But the oil glands are modified in the external acoustic meatosis canal to form a special kind of gland which is called the cerumenous gland which produces the ear wax. The ear wax helps you to trap any dust particle which could be there as a part of the ear. This then goes and hits a slightly concave structure. So the sound wave is going to go and hit a slightly concave structure which is called the tympanum. Yes, you heard it right, the tympanum. The tympanum could be compared to the beating of a drum. So this tympanum will pick up the sound waves and then transfer them to the inner part which is called the middle ear part. Right after the middle ear, you will have another part which is called the inner ear to which also we will come in some time. So now when the sound waves hit the tympanum, it transfers those vibrations to the middle ear. There are three really small bones and therefore we call them ossicles which are present in the middle ear. The ossicles of the middle ear are the malleus, the incus and the stapes. The malleus, incus, stapes. The malleus being hammer shaped and in the middle ear, this hammer shaped part of the malleus is attached to the tympanum, followed by incus, followed by stapes. So, malleus is hammer shaped, incus is annual shaped and stapes being stirrup shaped. The stapes is finally connected to the oval window. What is the function of these three really small bony ossicles? The function and the smallest one being stapes. The function of these bony ossicles is to amplify the sound waves. What do you understand by amplification? Amplify is to increase 
volume of the sound but why do you even have to do that because the transmission in the inner ear happens through a fluid yes there are two types of fluid in the inner ear so therefore we need to amplify the sound if you ever swam in your life you know it is difficult because the friction or the resistance which is applied by water is more than the resistance which is applied by air so therefore the amplification of sound waves is very very important through the various incus and stings moving now to the inner it's not really in this outer region it's quite inside and it's a really really complex network there is a bony maze which is there which is referred to as the labyrinth network there are two types of labyrinth network one which is the bony labyrinth that means the maze or the network which is towards the outside of the membrane meant to protect the network the fluid in the bony labyrinth is the perilymph and then there is a network which is the inner part which is protected by the outer bones this network is called the membranous labyrinth which has the endolymph the labyrinth or the inner ear is basically divided into two parts it has a semicircular canal a saccule and a utricle which does a different work and it has another part which is called the cochlea through which the cochlear nerve is impregnated right in the middle of the snail shaped cochlea This portion is meant for balance whereas this portion is meant for hearing. Let's first come to the balance part. Have you ever experienced in your life that you go on a merry go round and you come back all dizzy or very simply you just sit on your chair and you're bored and you start to spin around your chair but after some time doing something so simple also you're like oh, dizzy. How many of you have experienced something which is called as motion sickness in your life you're going up the hill and you're like oh my god all dizzy. Let me explain this super amazing sensory conflict to you. But before I go into the detailed explanation of the sensory conflict, you must know that through the oval window, the impulse or the waves enter inside three semicircular canals. These semicircular canals have a swelling at the base, which is called the ampulla, which is further connected to two more swellings called the saccule and the utricle. the saccule the utricle and the three semicircular canals basically function to maintain our balance yes that's their function if we ever have a disbalance we do have a disease which is called as vertigo when it becomes next to impossible to be even able to get up forget standing straight or doing even any other thing in your day to day activity now what happens is your joints your eyes and this fluid inside your ear are the ones which are responsible for maintaining a balance now imagine i'm setting sail on a ship so and i'm looking at the top of the ship or i'm looking at the dance party which is going on into the ship or i'm just sitting and having my food on the ship everything there is stable but because of the movement of the ship in these continuous jerky movements my ears apparatus that is the semicircular canal fluid is able to diagnose some jerky movement but my i see the food which is nearly stable so there is a disconnect which is there now suppose i am very happily sitting in a car so my joints are basically sitting comfortably so they're not really feeling any movement but when i go round the fluid in the inner ear moves and that causes a kind of a sensory conflict which is the number one reason for yes you got to try motion sickness it's a type of a sensory conflict between two different sensors for the same purpose in the human body and then we come to the snail shaped part of the ear which is called nothing but the cochlea and the central portion right in the middle is called the organ of cauti the organ of cauti is in the middle and there is a cavity on top which is called the scala vestibuli and below called the scala tympani scala vestibuli scala media in the middle and the scala tympani together are responsible for what i do or what you are undergoing right now while i am speaking that is hearing the organ of cauti is in the middle which has the endolymph whereas the two top chambers have the perilymph the base of the scala media rests on a basilar membrane and it has got plenty of hair called the ciliary hair to catch any impulse which is coming in the form of a movement on the fluid the sound wave finally is transmitted to the fluid causing movement in the fluid 
these hair like structures catch these impulses and give them to the nerve called the cochlear nerve. The vestibular nerve comes from the semicircular canals. The cochlear nerve comes from the organ of cauti, and together they take these impulses right to the cortex where we know which we are able to hear and maintain a balance. So with this really simple animated amazing lecture, I hope you are able to understand everything about hearing and balance. That's all for the class my dear kids. I hope you enjoyed, understood and absolutely got your concepts crystal clear. That's all for today. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our amazing lecture. Also most importantly, don't forget to leave behind a comment. Yes, till then, take care. See you soon.